The terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 changed America forever, rocking the country to its very foundations. Never before had we felt so vulnerable, so exposed to the threat of violence from foreign actors. Unlike the bombing of Pearl Harbor during the Second World War, this attack came not from an official government, but from individuals, fanatics, who had listened to neither reason nor diplomacy. If the goal of terrorism is to provoke fear, then the Taliban certainly succeeded. Never has the nation been more united than in the days and the weeks following September 11th. United in anger, grief, and an overwhelming need to feel safe again. Leave it to the government to exploit those feelings to seize a sweeping new set of powers. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. On October 26, 2001, President George W. Bush signed the Patriot Act into law. It was a hastily drafted law ostensibly designed to fight global terrorism and make it impossible for something like September 11 to happen again. This is what we're told anyways. It will help law enforcement to identify, to dismantle, to disrupt, and to punish terrorists before they strike. And in the fevered haze of our national panic, most of us were eager to believe it. The bill passed the Senate with only a single no vote from Democrat Russ Feingold. We will lose that war without firing a shot if we sacrifice the liberties of the American people. What many were too desperate to notice at the time was that the law severely weakened the constitutional protections on Americans' privacy and due process. Among other things, the Patriot Act allows the government to conduct searches without warrants or probable cause to secretly surveil a wide variety of electronic communications, and to indefinitely detain immigrants without trial. It also greatly expanded the range of activities that could legally be classified as terrorism. While most Americans in 2001 were focused on terrorist threats from the Middle East, a major section of the Patriot Act is devoted to redefining domestic terrorism. Section 802 of the law specifies that domestic terrorism includes actions designed to change government policy through intimidation or coercion, as long as such actions can be interpreted as violating local laws and posing a danger to human life. In practice, this definition reclassifies a great deal of political activism as domestic terrorism. Groups engaging in a large scale of protests and civil disobedience can easily run afoul of this language spanning on who is interpreting what constitutes danger. The ACLU points out that Greenpeace and other environmentalist groups regularly engage in protests that the Justice Department could define as terrorism if it wanted to. Of course, the vagueness of the wording means that the Attorney General can pick and choose who to go after, applying the law unevenly for political or ideological purposes. Most recently, we saw this play out with respect to parents protesting at school board meetings, objecting to the use of sexually explicit or ideologically slanted material in the classroom. I want her to hear from me as a parent what her, her gender identity means to her and to our family. Rather than hear those concerns out, the National School Boards Association asked Attorney General Merrick Garland to prosecute concerned parents on the domestic terrorist provisions of the Patriot Act. By labeling protesters as terrorists, the Justice Department is authorized to seize all of their assets without due process, including their houses, cars, and bank accounts. It's hard to see how what these parents are asking for poses any danger at all, but when due process is removed, it's easy for the government to contrive a justification for its actions, however flimsy. Like so many government policies, the Patriot Act is a shell game, promising to protect us from our enemies abroad, but instead being turned inward to persecute patriotic Americans, and to establish a police state unable to be challenged by direct citizen action. The right to protest the government is fundamental to a free society, but under the Patriot Act, almost any effective demonstration can be silenced from the top down. This is not a partisan issue. Whether you're a fan of Black Lives Matter or the Proud Boys, it's likely that sooner or later something you think is vital to the survival of our democracy will be shut down by a corrupt administration. As long as the Patriot Act remains law, the only voice we have is the one those in power decide to permit us.